Okay, so this this what we're going to do now is uh, really amazing uh, in terms of understanding uh, what happened to the Earth, what happened to humanity, uh, and why uh, God actually had to come down to the Earth and and fix things. Uh, so this part of the narration that we're on. It's very critical in understanding though not only the world but yourself and the 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 mag magnitude of of God's love and his redemption uh, so listen carefully listen carefully uh, to, to this part and this piece that has has never really been well, I don't want to say never, because that would make me sound like a big shot. And I'm not a big shot. I'm just sharing with you what I see. So I, I don't think it was ever made clear to me, though, in my upbringing, uh, in the formative years, in my kindergarten school at the church, which church was, and which most churches are, forgive me. Uh, it, they're important. Don't don't misunderstand me. We have to start somewhere. But now we're, we're going towards uh, our, our master's and our graduate degrees and our doctorates in, the, in knowing the Lord. So I want to talk about this whole reality that Jesus had to pass through the heavens and cleanse the heavens by his own blood. Why? What happened? What in the, I don't want to say what in the world happened, <laughs> but what in the heavens happened that would require this part of the salvation mission uh, to, to wait until Jesus uh, wrestled his way out of the arms of Mary when she was clinging to him after the resurrection. Well, why, did, why did he have to do that? Well, what happened in, in the universe? What happened? This, this part of the story is fundamental. It really is fundamental in, in our worldview, in understanding ourselves, in understanding the rescue mission of Jesus Christ. So what happened? Well, there was a war. There was a war in the heavens. We, we find it out of the book of Revelation. There was war in heaven. Uh, the the uh, we're, we're, We learn about this uh, it, it, very clearly. And we know from that, that war that strange, I guess that's maybe not the right word to say, but uh, remarkable spiritual things took place as a result of that war. Uh, we find that a third... Of, of the angels. Now, a third of the angels uh, means that, that uh, and, and there's there's places in the scripture that talk about just what that third uh, number was, was a, a myriads and myriads and thousands upon thousands of angels consists of uh, an angel circuitry. And there, there We know of three. There was the cherubim, the seraphim, and there's the wheels, which are mentioned in the book of Ezekiel chapter 1 and 10, the wheels called ophans or ophanim. The ophanim are the ones we're talking about here. The, this is the third, and the myriads and myriads and thousands upon thousands, if you do the math, break it down, it's a trillion. A trillion angels were affected in this war, in the heavens. And so this was this was a war that would eventually require that the heavens be cleansed because the father's house was defiled by the war. The war was wrong. The war was not to be fought. And yet there was this intermural war amongst this group, these ophans, these wheels. Uh, many of the Jewish commentaries mention ophanim. Uh, it's not directly, clearly uh, exegeted from Ezekiel 1 and 10. But if you delve into it and look at all of the scriptures and put it all together with the whole manifest of the whole word of the Bible, no, it, taking into consideration that many words uh, were, uh, were uh, not clearly the Hebrew in the Old Testament, uh, but changed from Hebrew to Greek and then into English, there's some things that are lost in the translation of words. So it requires a deep study to get to the to the truth of what the Bible is saying because uh, of the people that have, have uh, 
I don't want to say tampered because I think for the most part they did the best they could. But but there's certain things that are lost when you move from Hebrew to Greek to English and other languages. And so the Bible has to be uh, oiled from time to time to get the clear meaning out of it. And I'm not adding anything to the scriptures. I'm just trying to get to the the, the, the basic uh, foundation of it so that we have a clear picture. So a third of the angels got involved in a war amongst themselves. And because of that war, the heavens were defiled. And when the heavens were defiled, the, the, the penalty on these warring angels was they would have to be cast out. They were cast out uh, from the presence of God. And, and when they were cast out, uh, God also determined through his supreme court, which are called the seven spirits of God, you find in the first few chapters of Revelation, uh, made the determination of what would, the penalty would be for these warring angels. They would be thrown out and they would be required to uh, uh, either take on human flesh or they would have to, if they chose, follow Lucifer, who was the one that deceived them and caused them to go to war. So this is a cosmic war that took place in the heavens that defiled the heavens and the heavenly sanctuary. Not only did that happen, but at that point too, uh, uh, or soon thereafter, the earth was vexed with God withdrawing his presence. He just, he just made up his mind that he wouldn't be present on the earth. And so he uh, recused himself from the earth and put mankind into a situation where he would be unable to connect with the presence of the Lord. Only, only in a limited way in the temple. Uh, was the beginning of the understanding that God had to separate himself from man. And only through blood sacrifices was there any modicum of the presence of the Lord in the temple. And so we begin to see that uh, God has always desired to dwell with his people. In fact, the whole name Emmanuel, mean, Emmanuel means God with us, that God wanted to reestablish his presence with us so that we could know him and that he could know us and there'd be this intimacy uh, that would be restored. And so Emmanuel was promised in the book of Isaiah, uh, in, in the early chapters of the book of Isaiah, that God wants to reestablish his presence with, uh, with, with these angels that had been thrown out. And so um, this war in the heavens uh, is so fundamental to our understanding of our worldview and why the world's so messed up because God took his presence from the earth and uh, only in now a limited way to those that are open to receive his presence through recognizing the Savior, Jesus Christ, and what he made available through the day of Pentecost was the reestablishing of his presence on the earth, but only in a limited way through his people that would give up their lives and and uh, uh, identify with his death. And so the whole communion issue is uh, do this often in remembrance of me, because when you do this, you do show forth the Lord's death. And many times we misunderstand that uh, uh, during the course of a day, you can sin. You still sin because you still have this body that's prone to sin. And uh, when uh, Jesus says, I need to wash your feet, and Peter says, no, I, I need to wash yours. Jesus says, no, you don't get it, man. Uh, I have to wash you through my own blood daily because the way you walk will get you defiled and therefore to be restored so that you can receive from my throne, from my heavenly tabernacle, your feet or the way you've walked needs to be cleansed because you're prone to sin. Even as a believer, you're going to stumble from time to time. And uh, that's why when Jesus said uh, to the this disciples, when they questioned him, how many times should we forgive? Uh, they were thinking once or twice, maybe three at the most. Jesus says 70 times seven. So he gives a formula for forgiveness there that's really interesting. Another discussion later. But uh, we have to continually come back to the fount of his blood to be cleansed. A, a, a perpetual uh, potential for cleansing in his blood as we return to it. And that's why this statement, do this often in remembrance of me. It's not like we have to get resaved. But we're going to continue to make mistakes and sin against the Lord. 
And that's why he has this everlasting good news and gospel of redemption in his blood. But that's why the t heavenly temple had to be cleansed because of the war in the heavens. And it created the void on earth and put us into this predicament where we have this body that is a contradiction to our inner man, our spirit, and why we're caught in the past here and have to walk, learn how to walk in the spirit.